Hey, it seems like a good number of you have already logged in. So thank you so much again for joining us today for this webinar. We're really excited to have you. We certainly wish that we could be talking to you all in person, but we're really appreciative that you're joining us for this Zoom webinar. Um, my name is Olivia Ireland. I am one of the assistant directors of admission at Denison University. Um, I've been at Denison for, I'm just starting my fourth year now, um, and that's following my four years as being a student at Denison. Um, but I'm really excited you all logged in for this presentation. Before I have my colleague Candice introduce herself, I'm just going to briefly go over some quick Zoom housekeeping um, that we'll be kind of using throughout this presentation. We are going to use the Q&A feature um, throughout the presentation. So you're welcome to submit questions um, during our conversation, but I'd probably recommend just holding off and asking them at the end. We're gonna cover a lot of information about the demonstrating interest process and the holistic review um, application um, kind of review. So um, we're gonna cover a lot of information. We'll probably answer a number of your questions, um, but we'll definitely save a good amount of time at the end um, to get there. Um, lastly, if you wanna hold off on using the chat feature, we're just gonna use the Q&A today. Um, and I'm going to pass it off to Candice now to introduce herself. Thanks, Olivia. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Candice Chan. I'm the Dean of International Admissions at Furman University, and we're excited to be here with you today. So, sorry, having some technical difficulty. Ha! We actually wanted this presentations to be interactive. So instead of just talking at you, we would like for you guys to, put, for you guys to participate uh, with us. So you guys can see actually on this first slide here on the top of the slide, it says menti.com. Uh, this is the site that we'll be using throughout the presentation. We would like for you to tell us, um, you know, some of the questions that we're asking you. We have some polls in here that we would like for you to do as well. So if you guys can actually go to menti.com right now, um, and then if you're going to actually type in the code and also another way you can do it is you can actually scan this QR code here as well. You can do this on your phone. You can do this on your iPad. You can also do this on your computer. Um, if you actually go to menti.com and then enter the code, you'll also be able to follow the presentation along um, as we're doing this. So I'm going to give you guys um, just a couple seconds to get to menti.com. Um, and or to scan, scan the QR code that is actually here on this page. And our first question is that we would like for you to tell us is where you are from. If you can tell us what city you may be from, what country. Um, I know some of you are joining us from overseas internationally. Um, we would love to see where everyone is from. Oh, great. Look at you guys, you guys are so quick at this. We have some from Ohio, from, your, from the US, India. We have some students from India. There's a lot here, Seattle, Indiana, New Jersey, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, San Jose, Michigan. We have a really good mix in here. This is great. I love these word clouds. Um, they just kind of make my day. So this is wonderful. We have students are pretty much from everywhere. We have some students from Cleveland. Uh, from Golden, Colorado. I like that. Uh, Boston as well. This is great. We have a really good mix here. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that with us. And some of you are still typing away. This is great. Um, so this next slide, we would like to find out from you, um, you know, what best describes you. Are you a current student? Are you a high school counselor that is joining us? Are you a parent? who actually is interested in finding out and helping your children eventually applying, hopefully this fall. Um, so we're just trying to find out where everyone is from and then we'll give you guys a couple minutes on this. We have a lot of students here, which is great. Is that what you guys do when you're in class? Hopefully, maybe not, right? Great. So majority of you that are joining us today are students. This is wonderful. All right, so now I'm gonna just move along with the presentation. We kind of wanted to talk to you a little bit about what holistic review really is all about. Um, and then that ties a lot into demonstrating interest. Um, you know, because you'll find out later on, um, Olivia is gonna talk a little bit more about that. What are the different universities looking for? Um, we actually were able to do a survey with some of our colleagues 
Um, so then you can kind of see, you know, why holistic review sometimes actually ties into a demonstrated interest because majority of the universities that look for demonstrating interest uh, are more the university that are looking for holistic review. So you guys probably hear the terms a lot, holistic review. What is holistic review? Essentially, we're really just looking at your application as a whole. We're not just taking one thing over another. Um, you know, oftentimes when I'm reviewing application at Furman, um, a student send in their application, they send in their essay, they send in their test scores, they send in their transcript. Am I just looking at your transcript? No. So when we're actually reviewing application holistically, we're actually looking at everything. Um, obviously, your academic record is important because if you're not doing well in school, you're probably not going to get accepted to university. But, you know, a lot of students always ask, I'm not doing so well with my sanitized test scores. Uh, my SAT is not that great. Um, I'm just not a good test taker. For some of you that are applying to institutions like Denison and Furman, that's okay because we look at your application holistically. Um, so, you know, we will look at your test scores, but is test scores the most important? Probably not, because we look at everything, right? Also, your recommendation letters. Um, you know, sometimes students may not be doing so well. Um, I've had international students who actually have come to U.S. to the boarding school, and then they're studying at a high school in the U.S. Maybe they don't do so well the first semester, but it's okay because we'll see that, you know, you eventually improve. Maybe English is not your first language. Um, and then, you know, you don't do so well that first semester, but your recommendation letters comes in because your counselors or your teacher can actually then tell us, hey, this student is not doing so well that first, that first semester because, you know, they just got into the country or whatever reason it might be. Um, so we look at that, you know, we look at all those different things. When I'm looking at a student's application, I also want to see things that you're doing outside of the classroom, right? You know, we are also looking for students, you know, who are actually a the right fit for our university. So I don't want someone to just maybe studying. We wanted to see other things that you're doing, your leadership skills. Um, you know, of course, we will be reading your essay. Uh, I actually personally read all the essays for the applicants that apply to Furman. Um, there's a lot of essays that I read every year. Um, you know, our university is a little bit smaller, but you know, I still read all the essays because I wanted to find out, you know, what makes you, you in your essay. Um, and then obviously interview is another big component. Um, if a university requires an interview, um, you know, or even if it's optional, if you choose to do an interview, that helps us to get to know you a little bit more. Uh, we get to learn something, you know, about you that is outside of the application that is just on paper. Um, and then, you know, the last um, component on here is demonstrating interest. And we're going to go a lot more into details uh, about what that is. But we do look at that when we're reviewing application. Um, you know, at Furman, you know, if the students apply to us and they have not demonstrating any interest, Sometimes that could be the reason why you may get waitlisted. So what are some of these um, components that we look at, you know, in regard to the application, right? We are looking at also your research experience. Uh, sometimes when we look, look at your portfolio and then also maybe auditions that you're sending in, if you're interested in a particular major. Uh, we look at talents that is, you know, that is specific to you. Um, you know, you may be a very good writer. Um, you know, you may be very interested in volunteering. So we look at all those different things. Um, and then legacy, sometimes it's also part of the application. You know, if you have parents, cousins, your aunt and uncle, grandparents that may have actually attended the university, we sometimes look at that as well. And sometimes that become part of the demonstrated interest as well. Um, you know, and then of course, you know, we look at your class, you know, your high school, the composition. And then also obviously, you know, if you're really gonna be a good fit for our university. Um, and then, you know, I talked a little bit about that earlier, but you are looking at university, right? You're finding the right school for you, but as a university representative, we're also finding the right students for our institution. So now I'm gonna turn this over to Olivia. Uh, we have some questions, you know, about demonstrating interest. Yeah, so thanks, Candice. That was a great uh, kind of description of the holistic review process. Um, she mentioned a few pieces of demonstrating interest throughout that that we're going to cover now. But before we get started, I'm curious to see what you all think demonstrating interest means. I can definitely say that when I was a prospective student um, applying to colleges, I don't think I knew what demonstrating interest mean, meant um, and the effect that it had on an application. So I'm curious to see where you are um, going into this conversation. So we'll get started. 
visiting, asking questions, determinism to join a certain university and showing that to the university, keeping in touch with the school, um, keeping up with the counselors at the college, attending these webinars, yes, <laughs> meeting with reps, cutting a check, proving to a college or institution that you are interested in them by consistent interaction, wanting to be involved in the school, yeah, there's a number of these that um, definitely overlap with other responses. Um, so this is great. Um, it definitely seems like a number of you are getting information about demonstrating interest already as you're entering this process, which is wonderful to see. Um, yeah, showing that you're excited, going the extra mile to show your interest, um, making sure the individuals from the college know who you are. Absolutely, signing up for college events, interviewing. They just keep coming in and in and in. This is great. Yeah, this is wonderful. Candice, do you wanna skip to the next slide? Perfect, thank you, oh, sorry. <laughs> thank you. So when Candice and I first um, you know, talked about what we wanted to present in this webinar, um, we decided that'd be interesting to actually ask our colleagues and other university admission representatives um, if they did use demonstrated interest in their review. Candace and I both use it at Furman and Denison respectively, but um, we wanted to see what other universities were using it in their process. Um, and it was pretty interesting, the results that we received. I would say it was close to what I expected, um, but there is pretty, a, a pretty stark contrast um, and there's definitely a relativity in between the size of the university and if they're using demonstrated interest and then if the school is private or public and if they're using demonstrating and demonstrated interest. Um, so as you can see, um, if you're looking at the two extremes, 82% um, of the schools with zero to 3000 students on campus are using demonstrated interest during their review process. Um, on the other end, um, if the school had 25,000 plus students, um, only 21% of the schools were using demonstrated interest in their review. Um, similarly, with private and public, um, 25 out of 34 of the colleges that responded that were private universities um, were using demonstrated, demonstrated interest, so 74% of them. Um, and then with the public universities, 24%, 8 out of the 34 that responded were using demonstrated interest. So you can definitely see a correlation. And because you're um, tuning in for this webinar, um, for the students in the room, I'm assuming that you might be interested in small private liberal arts colleges. Um, and this could be um, really informative for you as you're going through the process. Um, that being said, it's also important to note that there are still large public universities that are using this too. So you never quite know if demonstrated interest will be a part of the review, but it's certainly a question that you can ask as you're going through the college application process um, to get a sense of if it's something that the schools that you're interested in um, will be using. So next I'm going to talk about um, what they said, what our colleagues said, um, if they mentioned that they did use demonstrating interest, demonstrated interest. So I know that a number of you touched on these um, in the mentee poll that we asked, but I'm going to go into it in a little bit more detail. Um, so the big response that I kept seeing over and over and over again is we track everything. Um, and I can definitely say that um, what I've seen in my time at Denison, that's definitely a reality for us. So emails, um, meaningful communication with counselors, um, absolutely one of the things that we're looking for when it comes to demonstrated interest. Um, I know that a few of you mentioned having that good relationship with a counselor. So that can be through email interactions. It of course could be through um, in-person on campus interactions. Um, it could be over the phone if you would prefer to call the counselor. Um, just finding ways for us to get to know you um, outside of just your application. The other part is, are your emails being opened? So this is definitely something that I wasn't aware of that universities were looking for um, when I was going through the process. I know that you all are probably getting inundated with the number of emails that universities and colleges are sending you, um, but we can actually see, um, are you opening these emails? Um, and that's something that we might use when we're looking at demonstrated interest. We're not expecting you to open every single email that we send, but um, if you are someone who's already indicated an interest that you're going to want to be a part of a specific academic program and the academic um, program head sends an email to prospective students, that might be one that we might look and see if you did open that um, to see if you still have remained interested in our university. 
interviews um, is a big one. I would say that that's one of the probably the best ways for us to see demonstrated interest because not only are we seeing that you're interested in us, um, we're also providing you with additional information about our university and getting a better sense of who you are as an applicant. Um, interviews are conducted in a lot of different ways. I know in a typical year we offer on campus interviews, virtual interviews, and alumni interviews in your hometowns. Um, this year, we're definitely gonna be doing lots and lots of virtual interviews. Um, and I know that many universities will be doing the same. So that's definitely something that I would consider and think about as you're going through the application review process in the next few months. Events attended, um, you know, some I think jump to think, oh, I have to go on a campus tour. That's how I show demonstrated interest in their process. Um, however, it's much more than that. We're looking at if you're attending these virtual visits, the webinars, like you all mentioned um, on the mentee poll. Um, are you attending school visits in a typical year? You know, this year it's gonna look a little bit different. Um, we, we won't be going to high schools um, as much. Um, however, your high school might be putting on a virtual event and we wanna see if you're showing up for those things. Um, one of our colleagues said one-on-one -on -one coffees. That must be something that they're doing at their university and then college fairs. Again, that can be both in person, but then also virtual in this virtual world that we're living in. Inquiry forms um, is another thing that can show demonstrating and demonstrated interest. So um, many universities on their webpage have a form that you can fill out where you're going to give us some information that will allow us to send specific emails that are related to your interests. Um, definitely would recommend filling those out um, if you stumble upon them. And the other thing that I would say is I often will be at a college fair or a visit or something and a student will say, oh, I already get your emails. I don't want to fill that out. Um, this is a great place where I would actually recommend filling it out again, because again, it's just another data point for us to be looking at another thing that we can be tracking um, when we are looking at demonstrated interest in the end. Counselor conversation. So we're definitely, Candace and I are really appreciative of the number of um, high school counselors that have joined us today. Um, you know, many of our universities, I know Denison offers counselor chats um, right before we're sending um, our admitted students their decision letters. Um, and these can be really, really informative for demonstrated, demonstrated interest. Um, you know, if we have a student that's currently sitting on a, the wait list um, and we have a conversation with a high school counselor and they say to me, Olivia, they are in here every day talking about how excited they are about Denison and they're talking about the organization that they're going to join and the major that they want to be. Um, that's a place where I, after that conversation, might go back and say, you know what, this is a student that I would really like to see bumped up. Um, and I would like to see them in our class. Um, so that can certainly be a tipping point. Um, ties to the university, that was the legacy piece I know that Candace mentioned in the holistic review process. Um, so the legacy status can definitely be a piece of demonstrated interest. Um, you know, students often ask if I'm a legacy, am I gonna get in? Not necessarily, but it can definitely affect how we see your demonstrated interest because if your mom or your dad or your grandparent or sibling or whoever went to one of our universities, there's a um, high chance that you've probably heard a lot about us um, and you might have a good sense that it's going to be a good fit. Um, portal logins and click engagement. So this kind of ties back to are the emails being opened. Um, once you submit an application to a university, um, you'll be directed to a prospective student portal where you'll be able to see all of the missing documents that you still need to submit. Um, and then if you're admitted, that's where they're going to show you your admission decision and then likely be posting all sorts of information for you as then an admitted or enrolled student. Um, we do a, often glance at, um, you know, are you actually logging into your portal? Um, are you clicking the different things, the different options that we're giving you? Um, and the big thing for this is if you submit an application to us on, you know, the common application opens on August 1st. If you submit us submit an application to us on August 21st and you have a portal, but you never access that portal and we're having conversations in, you know, early or late January, early February about who's going to be in our class and we can still see you haven't accessed your student portal, um, it's likely that you're probably not in interested in, in Denison at that point. Um, so that can have an effect on maybe you being put on the wait list instead of being admitted outright from the beginning. Um, the submission of the FAFSA and the test scores, um, I want to highlight this. This doesn't mean that because 
um, we're a test optional university and you don't submit test scores, that's gonna have a negative impact. By no means is that what this is saying. I think that the person who um, mentioned this um, is essentially saying, you know, you can submit an application to us without submitting your FAFSA or without submitting your test scores. But if you have indicated on your application that you are 100% applying for financial aid and then you never even send us a FAFSA, um, that might be somewhere where we say, okay, they're probably not interested in Denison anymore. Um, they're not even finishing their complete application. So even though we have a complete application on file, we don't have everything that you indicated that you would be wanting to send us. Um, so that's definitely a factor. Music and art supplements. Um, this is somewhere where if we see on your application that you are highly involved in your orchestra, for example, and you wrote your essay about how much you love playing the violin and you want to be majoring in, um, you know, violin on campus. Um, however, you didn't do an art supplement that might strike us as a bit odd. Um, maybe you've even mentioned that you have an art portfolio, but you haven't included it. Um, that could be a piece of demonstrated interest that we start wondering, oh, like the student hasn't completed this. Um, willingness to accept a spot on the wait list. This is another way, you know, if you are willing to accept a spot on the wait list and you are going to consider coming to Denison, even if you don't get um, that official admission letter on, you know, in the middle of March, um, that's a good way for us to see, you know, this student is really serious about coming to Denison. And even if they're not admitted right away, uh, they're still going to be considering us. Um, and so that might bump you up at the beginning rather than having to wait until June for that waitlist decision. Informal notes, like things about things like social media posts. Somebody mentioned this one um, and it's, I've found it to be interesting. I think it's, it really highlights the fact that we do make informal notes throughout all of our conversations and what we're seeing through the process. Um, and those are notes that we look back at when we're making our final decisions. Um, so for example, if there's a student who, when they're, they visit campus or they're attending a webinar or they're just really, really active on social media and they're tagging Denison throughout their whole entire application process, obviously super, super excited um, about coming to Denison. This is something that we might jot down and note. Um, and it could have an influence just because you're really showing that you're interested and excited about what we have to offer. Did you complete the optional essay? This is probably the one that I try to highlight the most to students. Um, you know, I often say like an optional essay is typically not optional um, in some ways. So um, for example, every year we send out a Y Denison essay in about February. And that's a great way for us to see, um, you know, one, why are you interested in coming to Denison? But also, are you still interested in coming to Denison? Um, and trying to, again, um, look at our applicant pool and make sure we're admitting students that are really excited to be there um, and are ready to come to campus if admitted. Um, and then the last thing that was mentioned is that they're used other uses for graduate admissions. Obviously, everyone here um, is applying for undergrad, so I'm not going to go into the details of that. I'm, I don't work in graduate admissions, um, but that's something to just keep in mind as well. Great, so now that you guys are all excited, you know, you wanted to apply to Furman and Denison or other university that you may be looking at, are you supposed to submit everything? How do you think we actually look at the data? Should you send us an email every single day? Um, so, you know, we're gonna talk a little bit about that here. Um, you know, the email, you know, that you sent to us, is it more, is the better? Sometimes it may not be. Um, you know, when I'm actually having a conversation with the students, if you're sending me an email, I really wanted to get some additional information from you or if you have specific questions. If you're just sending me an email just for the sake of sending me an email and it's not really a well thought out email, you probably don't really need to send me that email. Um, you know, the email should actually really start a deeper conversation about things that you may be interested in. Um, you know, maybe you're sending me an email and be like, hey, I saw that you have Hello Service Corps at Furman, can you connect me with a student, you know, who is actually in that? Because I really wanted to volunteer, you know, when I'm part of the university. So those are the type of the emails that you should be sending. Um, and then, you know, just send us an email when you really have a question. Don't just send it because, oh, I'm demonstrating interest. So let me send you an email every single day. That's really not what we're looking for. Um, and then, you know, with interviews now, um, especially with everything that is happening, you know, Virtual interviews versus in person, I don't really see in the near future we're going to be having any 
in-person interview. So definitely, you know, if you wanted to have an interview with an institution, uh, schedule something virtually. Sometimes it may also be great for you to actually have an interview with, with alums. Um, a lot of universities in the US, they actually have alums that will actually do interviews for them as well. Um, and sometimes, you know, you'll actually be able to find out a little bit more about how those students are doing once they graduate from that university. Um, and also with events, how many events should you attend? Should you join the virtual events every single day? Probably not. If you have done the virtual tour already, you probably don't need to do it again. Um, you know, look at events that interest you. Um, you know, between Denison and Furman, we have had a lot of different events throughout the summer. And then for this coming fall, we probably have different events, sometimes maybe in a specific department. Um, you know, if you're really interested in music or art, when we have an event that is about that, that's something that you should probably sign up for. Um, and then, do you actually have to sign up for everything that we offer? Probably not, once again, because, you know, we're not looking for the volume. We're really looking more for the quality, um, you know, for the events that interest you that you're participating in. Um, and then with additional documents, right, you know, a lot of times students email me and be like, hey, what else can I send you? I wanted to show you that I'm really interested. Um, do I need to see your third grade pictures? Probably not. Um, I'm sure you look lovely and then you look really cute, but I really don't need to see those. Um, should you send me a 20 page paper from your AP class? If it's something, um, you know, that is really of importance to you, um, you know, maybe if you're actually interested in being in a creative writing major um, and that particular paper maybe just really represent you, that may be something good for you to send. Other than that, I probably wouldn't want to see a 20 page paper that you're writing. Um, you know, we do actually review a lot of applications each year. So sometimes we may not have as much time as we would like um, to have. But you know, if you do have a portfolio for art that is really, really good, and you want it to be in the art major, you definitely should consider sending something in, in regard to that. Um, and then for high school counselors and, and teachers, how can you actually help an applicant? As Olivia mentioned before, those counselor conversation, we love those. Um, you know, sometimes I may even just get an email from a counselor. Um, you know, they may just be like, hey, I have these students. I was advising them about application the other day, and they really express, express interest about Furman. And these are some of the reasons why I love hearing about those things because it really helped us, um, you know, sometimes, especially when we are kind of in the borderline, when we need to wait list the student and we're really not sure, those conversations are really, really helpful. And for those of you who are parents, I love talking to you. I love to hear from you. But during the application process, I really like to hear from your children. I really like to hear from the students. Um, I want to learn more about them. Once I get to know more about them, once they have been admitted to the university, I would love to have a whole conversation with you about scholarship, financial aid. Um, you know, just have more, you know, conversation about what you need to do in order for you to maybe attend the university. Um, you know, sometimes if you have just general questions in regard to the application process, I definitely would love to hear from you. But really, the students should be the one who are doing those things. Um, they should be finding out how they should submit an application. Um, I remember one year I actually have an applicant. All I hear from is the parent. I never heard from the students. At one point I finally said to the mom, I was like, I'd love talking to you, but can I actually hear from your son? Um, you know, because I would like to find out why he is interested in Furman. Um, I wish mom was actually applying because she was actually really interested. Um, but, you know, we love to hear from the students really to learn more about them. And Olivia, back to you. Yes, thank you. So um, the last thing that we wanted to cover about demonstrated interest specifically was kind of why we talk, why we are using demonstrated interest and um, the purpose of everything that we just covered. Um, and frankly, a lot of it boils down to, I'd say two things. One, the campus fit piece. And then the second piece is the enrollment strategy. So something like an interview, for example, um, it can give us a great sense of if you're going to be a good um, fit for Denison's campus, Furman's campus. Um, and more than that, it's going to give you a better idea if, if you're going to be a good fit for that community. You know, if you go and do all these virtual events um, and you have these one-on-one -on -one conversations and you get to know your counselor, hopefully you're getting a good sense of if the university is going to be a good place for you. Um, but kind of back end of what demonstrated interest is doing is more this enrollment strategy piece. So 
in our profession, um, we often talk about the admission funnel of it, or the, the funnel of admission. So um, when you think about just the vast, vast number of, you know, 17 to 18 year olds, typically who are looking to go study um, at the undergraduate level, there are so many people that you're looking at. Um, and we have to make that population smaller. Um, and so then we have the people who are actually specifically looking at our university. So our our inquiries, the ones who have reached out, the ones who are going to events, all of that, um, where you all are right now. Um, and uh, we then want to move you further down the funnel into the piece of the applicant stage. So where you're actually applying for our university. Um, and then there's kind of this between area where, um, you know, I think many students would like to know everything that goes behind, um, on behind, you know, the curtain. But from the applicant stage to the enrollment stage where students are actually coming to campus, they've deposited and they're actually arrived on campus that fall. Um, that is the piece where demonstrated interest really can be useful um, in helping us get to that final stage. So um, if you think in terms of when I speak about Denison specifically last year, we had about 9,000 students apply to um, come to Denison this year. Um, and then there were a good number of students who were going to be waitlisted and um, admitted. Um, and then from there, there's a good number of students who actually deposit and then a good number of students who enroll. But to get down from that large, large number that apply to the people who are actually enrolling, it takes a lot of strategy um, and demonstrated interest really helps us in that. So again, just figuring out who's excited, um, who if admitted is going to really take advantage of that opportunity and come to campus and make a mark on our campus. Um, that's what we're trying to figure out with demonstrated interest. Um, so that's just kind of the answer to why we're using this um, and how it's helpful for us um, on the back end of the admission process. So we hope that this information was really helpful in terms of demonstrated interest. Again, we've saved a lot of time for questions at the end. Um, but before we get there, we're going to quickly just go over our university so you get to know a little bit more about us. Um, and then we'll go into the Q&A um, portion. So um, as I mentioned before, um, and I've mentioned throughout the presentation, I work at Denison University, which is a small liberal arts and science college located in Granville, Ohio. Um, which is about 25 minutes from Columbus, Ohio, which is actually the 14th largest city in the US. Um, so what I always say about Denison is that we have the best of both worlds in terms of our location. You have a small, close-knit community, Granville, um, that really feels like a New England, Northeast style town, um, where you're going to be living on campus all four years, um, really developing a home away from home. Um, but then you get the resources of a major city just 25 minutes down the road. And there, our students are going um, there for internships, externships, job opportunities after graduation, um, and then just social events. Um, you know, they have a Broadway series, professional sport, sporting events. Um, we offer transportation to all of that for our students. So you have that big city feel if it's something that you're looking for, but you get that close knit um, community as well. Um, in terms of kind of how we teach at Denison, I would say the two big things that we really emphasize is mentorship. Um, so 92% of our students report to find a mentor or a team of mentors during their campus experience. Um, as I mentioned, I did graduate from Denison and I can say that there were about 10 people that I felt like really helped me get from day one to the day I was walking across the stage on graduation. Um, and so mentorship is definitely something that we really believe is a huge indicator for if students are successful on campus. Um, and it's something that our staff and our faculty really like live and breathe um, and try to just help our students along the way. Um, and the other thing I would mention about how we teach is just the pragmatic approach to liberal arts. So we have a lot of new innovative majors that we're really excited about, um, really just thinking about how the world is changing today and making sure that there are academic programs to match that. So um, a few years ago, we launched global commerce, financial economics, data analytics, narrative journalism. Um, and then actually this year, we just um, started a global health program, which we're really excited about too. 
Um, and then the only other things I would mention really briefly would be our athletics and our arts. We have division three athletics. We're really competitive on our, at our conference level, at our division level. Um, there's tons of sphere around athletics at Denison. And then the arts, we have a brand new performing arts center. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, please send me an email afterwards if you have interest in either of those things or anything else about Denison. I'd be happy to answer more questions for you. So a little bit about Furman. Um, Furman is actually located in Greenville, South Carolina. As you guys can see on the map here, we are on the East Coast, but a little bit further south. So the weather here stays a little bit warmer, um, you know, compared to Denison, uh, just because we are further south. And Furman is a very small institution. We only have about 2,800 students total. Um, and currently, we actually um, we actually have over 60 different programs. Um, some of the popular majors are business, computer science, economic psychology, but we also have environmental science available. Um, Firmans also offer health sciences, um, and we have a sustainability um, you know, program actually available as well as a major. Majority of the students that come to Furman, they usually don't just pick one major, um, they usually do a double major. Um, and there are three things that we guarantee our students access to be able to do when you come to Furman. Um, the first thing we guarantee you access to be able to do is internship. So it doesn't matter what program you go into, it could be music, it could be history. Uh, we have an internship office here on campus that we actually help, will help our students to do that. And the second thing we guarantee our students to be able to do is research. So once again, it doesn't matter what program you go into, um, if you research is what you wanted to do, we will be able to assist you to do that. Uh, and the last thing we guarantee our students access to do is study abroad. Um, that is kind of on hold right now, uh, but those are the three things that we normally would guarantee our students to be able to do at Furman. Um, and the great thing about it is we're able to guarantee you access because we have funding behind it. Um, we do have different scholarships available, you know, so if you are interested in doing an internship, and you know you're short maybe rent money for the summer, um, there's a scholarship that you can apply for so you can actually get funding for that. And the same goes for study abroad and also for research. And the city of Greenville is actually a really happening city. It's the fourth fastest growing city in the US right now. We're located about a two hour drive from um, Atlanta. And um, this Greenville city itself, we have over 40 Fortune 500 companies actually in the area. Um, if you guys take a look on the bottom right picture here, that's actually how the downtown Greenville area looks like. Um, and the top right picture is how campus looks like. Campus is about 750 acres. It's about 3.5 square kilometers. So it's a really good sized campus. Uh, we are also SAT, ACT optional. So we're actually test optional. So for those of you who are afraid that you, know, you may have to take the test this year with everything happening, you don't have to worry about that and you're applying to Furman. And then we also have a lot of scholarships available. Uh, we have scholarship ranging from $10,000 to full tuition. Um, and Furman is actually athletic one for division as well. So we have some athletic scholarships. There are also some music scholarships with the music program. Um, and then uh, we do offer some leadership scholarships as well for our students. So with that, we're gonna actually ask you one last question on Menti. Um, I know a lot of you guys actually are, have a lot of concerns, you have a lot of questions. You know, what are some of your concerns right now when you're applying um, you know, during this pandemic, during this unprecedented times, you know, something that has never happened before. If you guys wanted to share maybe some of your concerns here with us, um, and then after that, we'll go into the Q&A and then hopefully we'll be able to address some of the concerns that you guys have as well. Not be able to get the feel of the campus. Yes, that definitely is one of them. The subject test, SAT. How is it going to be for, to affect your class? Are you going to accept less students, campus visit? Uh, we explain everything, that's great, I'm so glad. Um, not being able to visit campus. Yeah, a lot of you are actually concerned about that, right? Because you are spending the next four years um, at the institution. You wanted to see how campus is looking like. Um, how to figure out the campus culture. Um, you know, those are all very, very good questions. Um, you know, and I think a lot of students are having the same concerns right now. 
Olivia, have you been hearing about some of these as well from your yes, students? Yes, definitely. And I think yeah. the big one that I keep hearing is just um, the campus culture and community. And it is harder to get a sense of it. We know um, when it is a virtual world than if you're actually able to come to campus. But um, the one thing that I have been emphasizing is I actually feel like there's almost more resources right now. Um, even though you're actually not physically on campus, many schools are giving students the chance to connect with faculty, um, you know, see the virtual tour, yes, but also connecting immediately with current students, um, things like that. So I know, especially in the fall, at least for us, we're planning to even um, start offering more and more opportunities to really get a sense of who we are. Um, and hopefully that will help kind of ease some of that anxiety. Yeah, so with this, we're going to actually probably gonna go into the Q&A. So you guys can definitely type in questions in the Q&A spot. Um, or, you know, if you guys actually wanted to, you can also go to Menti um, and then type in your questions here as well. So there's actually one question um, in the Q&A box right now. Um, for those of you who are actually a plane flight away, the current climate has inhibited our ability to visit campus and consequently made early decision the strongest way to demonstrate interest. That's very good. Um, difficult uh, sight unseen. Has any consideration be given to installing early action? So Olivia, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so um, at this point for Denison, we're planning on just continuing to offer our same rounds, um, early decision and regular decision. Um, that being said, um, kind of what I was just implying, we're trying our very best to give students a feel for campus, even though they are potentially going to have to make that decision um, from their home rather than um, after seeing campus. Um, so what I would say is if you're already thinking about going early decision somewhere, just reach out to the counselors. Um, we will be happy to accommodate you in helping you get connected to a current student who might have the same academic interest or same extracurricular interest. Talk to a faculty member virtually. Um, we'll try to give you the most inform information about your interests and help you get a sense of campus, even though you're at home this semester. And definitely check with the universities that you're applying to. Um, you know, we obviously would love for you guys to apply to us, but if you're applying to us at other institution, in year past, they may have certain policy, but this year, a lot of universities are changing um, the policy around. A lot of universities are not asking for test scores anymore. They, you know, becoming test optional for this incoming year. Um, so that's definitely a very good question for you to ask. Um, and, you know, we as admissions council would love to hear from you. So email us and let us know. Um, I think somebody's asking about the Halal Service Corp that is at Furman, because I did mention that. Um, that is a community um, services organization. I think we're going to be doing programming a lot differently this coming fall. Um, we're looking into doing a lot more things virtually. Um, so hopefully we'll still be able to do things, um, but that's definitely going to be something that is going to be a little bit different um, this coming year. Um, another question that's broad that both of us could answer would be what decisions have been made about how many spots are being held for students who took a gap year versus actual 2021 high school graduates. Um, Candice, you want to speak on that first or you want me to? So we actually don't really have specific spots that we hold for students. Um, you know, at FEMA, we actually have a lot of our students, they have applied to us in the past. Um, that may have taken a gap year just because you know they wanted to maybe do community services they wanted to have a experience after high school before they apply to us so we never really have a limit of who we admit um, it's not like we have an x amount of students you know that we will accept so essentially we're really looking still once again for that student who is going to be the right fit for fireman um, that's really what we focus more on and the other thing I would mention is that both Furman and Denison are utilizing the hybrid approach for this year. So um, while it may feel to you that, oh my goodness, all of these students aren't going to campus, they must all be then in the next class. Um, there are actually a large number of students who have opted to do online learning just because they're excited about the experience. They're excited to be on campus next semester, hopefully. Um, so many will actually still be in this class um, and there will still be um, plenty of spots, I suppose, if you wanna say that um, left for the upcoming class of 2021. So how do our schools help the LGBTQ plus um, students? Um, Olivia, do you want to start on this one? 
Yeah. So I would say that at Denison, how I always explain it, it was one, I think that um, diversity isn't something on Denison's campus, diversity in all forms. So whether that's um, gender, sexual, racial, it's not something that's just counted at Denison. It's something that we really like to live and breathe and celebrate um, on our campus too. So I think that's one piece of that um, is just the fact that it's not something we're just counting. It's something that um, we're really proud of and we want our students to be able to be themselves and showcase their identities um, and we want them to be supported in all of that. Um, the other thing I would I would mention specific to LGBTQ plus students would be that we do have an Outlook organization on campus um, and so not only are they providing support for our students, they also have been incredibly instrumental in making Denison even more accepting and open. So for example, um, when I was a student, they put forward a bill to our student government that allowed for gender neutral housing um, for all class years and gender neutral bathrooms. And that's something now that we see in all of our residential halls and all of our academic buildings. Um, so they're not just there to support, but they're there to continue to advance our university um, as well. And very similar to Denison, uh, Furman offers the same thing. We actually have a center uh, for, uh, it's a center for community, I can't talk today, for community and inclusiveness. Um, and within that, you know, there is different organizations that fall under that. Um, you know, we obviously provide all the accommodations, um, you know, that our students need. Um, and then also, you know, really just depending on what you want to involve in, we have quite a few different organizations on campus, um, you know, that are for the LGBTQ community. Um, and then we definitely really promote the openness and the support um, on campus for these students as well. Um, and I think there's a couple questions here about SAT being optional. Is that actually for international students as well? Um, and for, I think for both Furman and Denison, it's, it's the same. It's SAT optional for all our students. So it doesn't matter if you're international or if you're a domestic student. There are other questions about looking at students from in-state versus out-of-state. Um, and the thing I would say there is um, that we're both private universities. And so there's no difference. Well, Candace, correct me if you're wrong, I'm wrong, but there's no difference um, in the sense of how we're looking at those applications, whether you're a student from in-state, whether you're a student from out-of-state or whether you're a student coming from an international country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> um, no, 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 go ahead. I was just agreeing with you. I was gonna say, there's another one about uh, just concerns about interviewing like from a phone um, because they don't have a computer. That's totally fine. We will do phone interviews. Um, I know that we've even done FaceTime interviews when um, there's been failures in technology. So we're definitely flexible. We just wanna be able to talk to you um, and get to know you in the application process. I think we have pretty much done it all different ways um, this year. We have had students, you know, who I have like actually at some point I was trying to have an interview with the students and then the internet went down and then we were actually texting each other on the phone trying to finish up the conversation. So we haven't done it all. I um, mean, you know, we definitely will work with you. We know that this is just a challenging time and there's just a lot of things happening. Um, and I think you'll find it from a lot of different universities as well. We're really trying to just do our best to accommodate you. Um, you know, it's not the easiest time for you to be applying to an institution right now. Um, and we really are here to try to help you just in whatever way, you know, that, that may be needed. Um, you know, and sometimes we're doing things that we have never done before, so. Um, there's one question here that's specific to one of the events that we um, offer, which is our dialogue with Denison. But I think I can answer this question more broadly in the sense that um, the student asked, how does dialogue with Denison, which is one of our programs that we offer every November, fit into the admission process? It would be the same with most events. Um, so again, it's just another event that's attended. Candice highlighted that you don't need to go to every single event. Um, that being said, if there are specific events that pertain to your interests, those are definitely ones that we would love to see your attendance at. So um, I know that we do like faculty panels with our different um, departments. If you've already expressed that you're interested in those, we that specific department, we'd love to see you there. Um, we do an athletics panel. So if you're interested in varsity athletics, we'd love to see you there. Um, but it's just another event to um, kind of be attended. And do you, want, do you know the early decision acceptance rate here? Early, early. What do you guess? Your early yeah. decision acceptance rate. 
Our early decision acceptance rate, um, so about 50% of our past class came through um, early decision and the acceptance rate was higher than our regular decision. It was around 60% um, compared to it being 29% in our regular decision round. Uh, this is another great question. How will COVID-19 affect sports this year? Um, is it's definitely affecting it. Um, we are slowly actually bringing student athletes back on campus and we are being very cautious. You know, we want to make sure that, you know, students are being able to do what they need to do, but are still playing safely. We actually are still not really sure yet if we're going to be playing this fall. There are talks that we're going to be delaying playing in the games. So it's, and then everyone is going to have to wear masks. You know, we have to, make sure that you know, we're, we're doing everything safely. So that's just a lot of things are still kind of in the unknown. Um, you know, we are bringing athletes back on campus. So even if they're not able to compete this year, this year we're hoping at least they will still continue to be able to do practice. Uh, but we are actually making all our athletes wear masks currently while they are doing practice on campus. And I'll leave it for you guys. Yeah, we just actually had an announcement from our conference about a week ago that we um, will be canceling all competitions until December 31st. Um, so our students will still be participating in athletics on campus. You know, they're still part of the team. Um, for certain teams, I know that practices are going to be held um, but there will be no like fall football season, for example, um, as their season will be over before that point. So um, that's where we are right now. <laughs> it does seem like with all of the kind of COVID related questions, things are changing quickly, um, but it seems like for us at least there won't be a fall season and hopefully we'll be back for the spring um, if things are more controlled. And then I also remember, I think with some of, are you guys hearing me okay? Oh my, mm -hmm. you're good. Okay. Um, I think I saw some of you are really concerned earlier when we were asking about COVID as well, you know, when we got to finances, um, you know, university still has endowment, you know, the scholarship funding, all those are still there. Um, you know, we're still offering our students scholarship um, and financial aid is still available. So those concerns, I think, you know, when you guys are applying for institution this year, they are legit concerned, but it doesn't mean that that, University, you know, just all of a sudden doesn't have any money anymore. Um, you know, so the funding that is available for the students that is still going to be there. Um, and that's why university has endowment and, then, you know, these scholarships are still funded. So as you're applying, obviously make sure you ask those questions. Um, but we actually have been giving out more scholarship this year just because of everything that has been happening, um, you know, for the incoming class. Um, so just because COVID is happening doesn't mean that we have less scholarships to give out, um, you know, to students. Um, and then there's another question here, you know, can you apply for two majors? Yes, you can apply for two, three, four. Um, you know, we do have a lot of students come to our institution. Um, or maybe if you don't have any idea what you want to major in, you don't really have to make a decision right away either. Yeah, I think the one thing to just kind of highlight is that because we're a liberal arts college, um, even like you can be admitted to Denison and then at that point you get to pick from any program. And that's really the case at most liberal arts schools. So you don't have to have then specific requirements um, to then select the biology major. If you're admitted, you can then declare a biology major once you arrive on campus and then you'll have to just get the credits for that program. Um, there was a question about do inter or do applicants have to interview this year or next year? Um, so I know for Denison, we only um, interview students when they are um, in the spring of their second to last year. So the spring of their junior year, that's when we start interviewing them. So um, we hold those slots for students who are entering the application process. I don't know, Candice, how you all do it. I'm um, and actually interviews are optional, so it's not required. Great. Um, and then this is a really good question here, actually. Um, who is the perfect student for your universities? Olivia, you want to start with that one? 
Yeah. So what I would say is that um, I think Denison's students are incredibly passionate. I think they're incredibly passionate about a lot of different things. Um, Denison, I think one of the great things and what I found in my experience was that it's not like everyone on campus was a varsity athlete or everyone on campus was involved in the arts. There was really this broad mix um, across campus. And because of that, um, you likely as someone who is an athlete, for example, um, and you might be studying biology, you're still going to get to know someone who's really, really passionate about cinema. And you might decide because of that, you're going to take a cinema class because you're hearing your friend talk about it and they're so passionate about it that you're kind of energized and excited about it too. So I think they're really passionate and that really trickles throughout our whole campus body. And the other thing I always mention is that um, there's a large kind of social community environment on campus. So all of our campus live on campus all four years. Um, they really get to know one another. They really take care of one another. There's so much support. Um, you know, we have rigorous academics, but it's still very collaborative. You're not working on a curve. You're not trying to beat out the other students for a higher grade. People are still willing to sit down with one another, review for a test together. Um, it's definitely a very collaborative community. So I think that it's just a passionate community overall. I mean, a friend is somewhat similar because we are also a very small community. Um, for students, you know, that will be that perfect fit here is that, you know, you're looking for something to do at the university other than just studying. Um, as I mentioned before, we guarantee our students access to do three different things when you're studying at Furman. Um, and we call that the Furman Advantage. And for students who want, really wanted to take advantage of research, internship, study abroad, um, you know, Furman is definitely the place that you want to be. Um, and we look for those students, you know, we want you to be involved outside of the classroom. We want you to do a um, research, you know, that you're really interested in with your faculty member. Um, so for students who are really looking for that smaller community, um, you know, but still want to do a lot of different things, um, Furman is actually definitely going to be the place for you. So this is our contact information here as well, if you guys have any other questions. Um, and I think we have time for a couple more questions here. Um, someone well, has questions about housing and food. Oh, sorry. <laughs> No, you're yeah. fine. So yeah, so housing and food. Um, food was a big part in my college search. So I won't talk about it for hours like I could. The food in Granville is amazing. It's like all local. And so you can't find the food anywhere else. Um, and so all of this, I haven't been able to get to campus and I really, really miss Granville food. Um, but it's amazing that in the, in the town food, um, definitely if you're able to come to campus, check that out. But the food on campus is also great as well. We have lots of different options which is nice. So you have the two traditional dining halls where you can have the all you can eat experience. Um, but then there's also food in our student union that's more grab and go. And so you can order specific things off the menu. It's completely fresh. Um, the black bean burger and the chicken avocado burger is absolutely amazing. Um, the other thing is the dining, the people who work at the dining hall are some of the most fabulous people you'll ever meet. Um, they will listen to you. And if you say like, I know last year there was a student from India who was like, you're not using enough of this spice. It doesn't taste like the food from my home. Um, they like started adding that and they actually did a cooking class with her so they could learn how to adjust their recipes for what she missed from home, which I thought was so sweet. When I was a first year student, I told somebody that I loved the brownies that they made, but they knew I had a track meet and they made me a plate of brownies and kept it for me for when I finished my track meet. So it's just like those little personal touches that make you feel like home with the food. Um, the housing, there's a number of kind of different options for our first year students here typically in the standard double, triple, single option. Um, and all of our first year students live on the same residential quad. So you really get to know one another. You're all going through the transition at the same time. Um, and then after your first year, you move over to another quad on campus where you'll live for the next two years. And that you have kind of an expansion on the type of housing that's offered. You still have the single, double, triple, but there's also four person suites and then six person suites as well, where you'll have your own bathroom. Um, you're sharing a common area with those people. And then your last year on campus, you get to live in the senior apartments, which are beautiful. We actually just finished Silverstein Hall. It's our most recent construction process, project that happened on campus. Um, and so now 100% of our seniors get to live in a senior apartment. Um, they are really nice spaces. You have your own bedroom. You share the apartment with three other people. You have your own bedroom, two bathrooms in there, 
a full kitchen, full living area. Um, it was much larger than my first apartment out of graduation and much nicer. So um, it's a really nice space. They, they do kind of get better year after year. I love the double style just because you got to know so many people, um, but there are changes so you don't get tired of what's being offered as well, which is nice. And I think with COVID, a lot of our universities this year, we are actually all going to be very cautious. Um, we are actually also, I think, spacing our students out a little bit more. Um, also, you know, we're cleaning bathrooms and things like that in between. And then we will also have isolated area where we'll be um, housing our students, you know, in case, you know, someone did get tested positive or if, you know, someone displays symptoms. Um, so all universities, I wanted to say just about across the U.S., are I'm putting different plans in place. Um, and I'm pretty sure, you know, Denison is doing the same thing. Um, we actually have, have eliminated some of the numbers. You know, we used to actually have triples in, in some of our dormitories and now we only have doubles available. So I think universities are definitely doing different things. Um, go to our website and then, you know, check out all the different things that we're doing. Majority of us has a page, um, you know, that is called COVID-19 or something similar to that, um, that will probably be able to give you more information. Um, and I wanted to be time conscious here. I think we, we have taken up an hour of your time. This is our contact information. Please email us. We would love to hear from you. Um, you know, we sorry we didn't get to answer everybody's questions, but email us. That's why, you know, we have the, we have our email address here so we can actually talk to you uh, more, you know, in regard to anything questions that you may have. And Olivia, will, you, will we be sending out the recording? I think there was some participant that were asking as well. Yes, there will be, the recording will be posted on Denison's main webinar page where we have recordings from our previous webinars and where we'll be adding our registration links for our upcoming ones. Um, but then we will also be sending, um, we can send a recording and a follow-up email. So again, if you need a recording, I know I have that one student's um, email address, um, but feel free to reach out and we can get you a full recording so you have it for your record as well. But thank you all so much for joining us. We really, really appreciate it and hope you have a good rest of your evening. Yes, thank you so much. Bye, Candice. Bye. <laughs>